What is up? Jake Codeweiss with Musician on a Mission. Today we've got another special video from Caleb over at Mastering.com. Let's jump right in. Hey, this is Caleb from Mastering.com. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. If you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. Okay, so what I want to do today is show you how to set up and properly manage a mastering session in Logic. And then afterwards, I'm going to show you if I was stuck on a desert island and all I had was access to Logic plugins, how I would master a track. Um, but I know you guys don't like a lot of talk, so let's jump right in. So I've got a, a session of Logic open here. And the first thing I need to do is just lay out and configure everything properly. Essentially, I want to make two aux tracks. I can do that simply by changing the output here to bus one, and then changing the output of auxiliary one to bus two. And we'll also want to see these up here. And so what you do is you right click and uh, click create track for both of these. <clears throat> now we're gonna name this one EQ and we're going to name this one Compression. So this is going to be our EQ track, and this is going to be our Compression track. And we break those out for a few reasons that you'll see as we go through this. Primarily, on the EQ track, we want the ability to do some volume automation if necessary. And so we, want, we would want that on a separate track. And we also want to have this top track available for any uh, sends that we're going to do to analog gear. And we're going to put all that on its own track here. We also can kind of see as we go through the levels that are being pushed through to the next ones. It'll help us um, gain everything properly. And now what you'd want to do is, is bring in your session. So I have an EP here. And so you go to your finder. You'll drag those up into your uh, track window. And what you want to select is place all files on track. What that's going to do is just put them front to back. And because I had previously titled these, one, two, three, four, and five, it put those in order. Now, if I need to go through and put any fades on any of these, I can do that. And you would do that by holding shift control and dragging. All right, the next thing you want to do is you want to get all of your tracks to be about the same volume. So we can see here, that this track is louder, this track is louder, this is right in the middle. By the way, this is an artist named Nate Bradshaw. Check him out for sure, very talented. And we're gonna be uh, listening to some of his music today. But I'm gonna select a portion of these and I'm just gonna look at what's happening with the output. Do we have enough headroom? <laughs> So maybe I'll find one of these other ones. And if you want the truth. That one's a little bit better. So maybe I'll make everything this volume. All right. So the best way to do this in Logic is to actually click on the region that you want to adjust and hop over here to where it says Gain. And you can actually just drag with your mouse down and it'll watch the... It's nice because you can watch the waveform uh, get smaller, which isn't 100% accurate to matching these, but it'll get you pretty close. So what we're going to do is just drag that down until it's looking at about the same. And then we'll just test it and see. And my soul is grieving Your life is sing Your It's about the same. We'll do that same for here. Let's bring that up a little bit. And again here. And then the last one, bring it down a little bit and see where we are now. Cool. 
And now we've got those pretty much volume matched. And the reason we, reason we want to do that is because now they're going to interact with our compressor and all of our other tools uh, uh, all the same, which is what we want. Okay, so now I have all the tracks up here matched. The reason I separate these out into EQ and compression channels is primarily because I want this EQ channel to have another layer where I can affect volume if I need to. Is if there is a verse or a chorus or a part of a song that's either too soft or too loud, what I can do is go in and actually draw in some automation for that part. So let's pretend that we found that this part was just too quiet and needed to come up because it was interacting with the compressor in a way that wasn't right. Simply, you know, you would just do something like this to bring up that part of the verse so that it's uh, reacting with the compressor in the same way. And you might do this a few different times throughout uh, throughout the album if you're doing a whole album. So that's why we leave this lane open so that we can do a little bit more of these inter-song moves when it comes to volume automation. So now, if what you want to do is run this out to any analog gear, what we're going to do is take our main track here. We're going to go ahead and go down to Utility. We're going to select I.O. And I have here, I'll run it out through the Solid State Logic Fusion, for example, here. So we'll put that uh, through the out correct outputs, and that will be personal to you. And now if I uh, do that and then play it, I can see, but you can't see, that it's running out through the Fusion. And all I have on there is just a little bit of vintage track. So that's how you set up a session in Logic. It's pretty easy if you know what you're doing, and then you can apply your EQ and compression from there. Now, if I was mastering this track and all I had was Logic plugins, let's see what that would look like. To be straight up front, Logic doesn't have the best tools for mastering, but they do have a few good ones that are pretty useful. So let's check out a few of these that are somewhat useful. First off, their meter isn't too bad. So if we go to metering and we take the um, multimeter, what this is going to do for us is it's going to analyze as we go through the, the frequency and then also the LUFS and RMS response. And I want to change a few of these settings here. I'd like a broader kind of view of that. So I'm going to have less bands. Uh, this is great, this is great. I'm going to change this to RMS so I can see RMS over here, LUFS over there. And then I'll just see the peak for a little bit longer and just make sure we're doing everything. So as I'm going through applying all my compressors and, uh, com uh, and EQ, I can see what's going on. First, I'm going to listen with my ears, though. That'll be just for reference. Now, when it comes to EQ, Logic doesn't really have a lot of options other than just its main EQ. So if I was using that and I was working on these songs, let's take this song for example. Um, I've already mastered these before, so I kind of know uh, what they're supposed to uh, sound like and what I did. But I'm going to roll these off pretty sharp, <clears throat> down around, I'd say, like that. And I wish it even went sharper like the Fab Filter does. But that's fine. Uh, in this particular song... We're adding just a hair down here at um, right around 60 to 100. That was broader than that, but not very much. I remember cutting out a little bit of 500 ish just for a little more clarity, but not very much. I remember making the vocals pop out a little bit more, and so I remember adding somewhere around here. I found the uh, the nice range that's helping with the vocals and just gave it a little bit of uh, brightness. And then up on top, the top end, but very, very high up. I don't really want any of the, even the 10K or 12K. So I'm going to have to make this really sharp. But this is going to maybe just add some air way up top. And I'll let you hear the difference here. It's going to be really subtle because this mix is already really good and I didn't really need to do a whole ton, but this is the difference that it's sounding like. So here's with the without the EQ and then I'll switch it on.
see how that's just giving it just a little bit more life, a little bit more space, and a little bit more low end. So that's kind of fun. Uh, it didn't need a whole lot. So, But if all I had was Logic plugins, this is really the only one that's very useful at all for EQing. They don't have any uh, kind of Pultec clones or anything for saturating the high end very well. So that's what I would use there. And then when it comes to compressors, again, it's not a great option. But if I had to pick one, I would pick um, the vintage VCA option. Okay, this is going to be the closest to a mastering type of compressor. And so let's hear, let's see what this is doing. And when can I have you? Please come on back and walk out from the black is my heart is missing. start looking at my meter and just seeing if we're in the ballpark we need to be at in the compressor phase. You? And when can I have you? Close. Please come on back and walk out from the black. That's about where I need to be. And then the last thing to do just very simply is add a limiter and there's just an op one option here really but it's a pretty decent limiter honestly not too bad just get that to negative one and then I have about 3 dB more of headroom that I need to do there and let's just see where we are we used to be. close maybe just one more half a db and my master would be something about like this and when can i have you please come on back here's what it sounds like with everything off Because that's already a really great mix, I didn't need to do a whole lot. And I can almost kind of get away with it with Logic plugins, though. Again, these aren't the best uh, mastering plugins that exist in the industry for sure. But hey, it sounds pretty good to me, actually. Um, not bad at all. So those are the tools that you could kind of reach for if you were mastering in Logic. Um, hopefully this uh, has been informative. Okay, so one of the things we want to be really clear about is that we're showing you tips and tricks and templates here to try to help as many people as we can learn the art of mastering. But to be honest with you, tips and tricks and templates like these won't actually help you learn to master like a pro unless you have some more instinctual things in place. What I mean is if your room's not dialed in so that you're actually getting a, an accurate translation of the music, if your ears aren't dialed in and trained to hear frequencies at a really high level, if you don't have a deep understanding of the tools that we use in mastering, then any of these tips and tricks aren't actually going to be helpful to you. And in mastering.com, that's exactly why we've developed the program that we have. We, we're not about gimmicks. We're not about tips and tricks. We're going to teach you the core fundamental things that will actually enhance your abilities as both an engineer, producer, artist, and actually make a difference in helping you navigate and find success in the industry. So if you find that you follow these types of tips and tricks and tutorial videos and you're still not able to get the sound that you have in your head to come out of the speakers, follow the link in the description. Just check out our website. Check out some of our videos. If it seems like we might be able to help you, uh, book a call with us and we'd be happy to chat with you. But we always want to be really clear and we don't want to do anyone a disservice. Tips and tricks and templates aren't going to help you if you don't have those core things in place. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you all have a great day, and we'll talk to you next time.